Thank you guys all for coming out to the online education open house. I'm Zach. I'm going to talk a bit about Hackio, uh, some things we've done, some things we want to do, and some things we've learned, learned along the way. Um, I know we asked this question earlier, but people were shy. How many of you guys are actually students? Hands super high. OK, that's a lot. That's awesome. Um, you guys, I think, know at least as much as the professors do about how this stuff can work. So don't hesitate to get involved and be bold about your opinions. Um, and then uh, how many of you guys have heard of Hack Yale? So I know. OK, uh, cool. That's like 2 thirds better than I expected. Um, Cool, so what Hack Yale is, what we've learned, uh, what we are is also what we hope to do. Again, this line broke, there's no space there, but uh, if you want to see the talk, go to hackyale.com slash pdf slash what is uh, I'll leave this on the screen for a minute. All the slides are there, and they are formatted nicely because it has Futura. Um, or I think it's, it's something else, but anyway. Uh, cool, so I'm Zach. I'm the director of Hack Yale. I've been an instructor at Hack Yale for four semesters now. Before that, I was a student. Um, I'm a senior in Trumbull, majoring in computer science and econ. Uh, this summer, I worked at Google and Mountain View. And I really like slapstick comedy, especially when it involves Martin Lawrence. <laughs> Any Blue Streak fans? Not enough. OK. So Hack Yale through the ages. Uh, we provide student-run lectures in web development, introductory programming, and design to other students. So this is taught by students, taken by students. Uh, we started in the fall of 2011 um, with a like, flagship lecture course that ended up being two seminars. Uh, there was huge demand from the start. We had about 600 applications for the first course. I was one of the applications, and I was lucky enough to get in. Um, and I took the first course, which taught introductory HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Node.js, which are programming languages you can use to build websites. So we considered expansion after that fall. We talked with uh, people at Harvard and Princeton. And it sort of became clear that we were best off focusing on doing as good a job as we could here uh, with the limited man and woman power that we had. Uh, eventually, we settled in as a provider of educational, cultural, and professional resources to Yale students. Um, so what that means is we have our flagship class. I teach that uh, for the fourth time now. It's uh, an introduction to front-end web development. So learning how to build cool websites that don't remember anything about you and just show content. Um, so similar to uh, what we were talking about with like a website that says what your course is, uh, that would be an example. Uh, we have workshops. Uh, this actually spun out of a failed attempt to make more classes. In the second semester, we had a Rails class, Ruby on Rails, an iPhone app building class, and a Node.js class in addition to our front end class. And Students were really excited about that. We got tons of applications like, yeah, this is going to be my biggest thing of the semester. And then uh, people ended up not really being able to commit. And part of that is because these topics are more esoteric than the original uh, flagship lecture class. So it's a little harder. If you miss one section, it's much harder to catch up. So we decided that instead of devoting 10 weeks to these subjects, we'll have jumping off points of one to three hours where you learn about the subject, you meet some people who are into it as well, and you get a, a starting point from which you can go and learn on your own. Uh, we serve a function of publicity. We have a mailing list, and about uh, 1,500 students have signed up for it. So whenever there's a big tech event, we help publicize it. We publicize our own workshops and our class. And then we recently launched Hack Yale Jobs, which is a jobs board to connect startups and students looking for jobs. Uh, it's sort of like UCS, but for smaller companies who don't have the man and woman power to advertise on UCS or send recruiters here and take students out to the study for cocktails. Um, so we have our lecture. It's once a week. We have office hours. We have homeworks. Um, we stay after and talk with people. We post our slides online. You know, I don't know if you guys have read about like the nine dimensions of providing an education. Uh, so we try to hit as many of those as possible, those being like content, professor-student interaction, although it is bold to call myself a professor, instructor-student interactions, student-student uh, -student interactions, et cetera. We try to do as much of that as possible. Um, and we have a bunch of cool websites that have come from the students who took our class. Uh, the Yale Film Society website was built by Becca Edelman, who was originally a Hack Yale student. She used it as her final project for the class uh, and some other ones. Cool. So the future, uh, we, we like to separate things into like incremental change 
and like moonshots, which are like bigger ideas that we're not working on already. Uh, so one, we want to continue to try to meet demand. Uh, like I said, we get between three and 600 applications for our class each semester. We can take about 50, uh, so that's not enough. We'd like every student to have a chance, and it's really unfortunate when a student who would really take it seriously and make it their top priority doesn't get in because everyone's going to say they're going to make it their top priority. Uh, jobs and opportunities, we want to keep adding to our jobs board, keep doing stuff there. I think we're doing a good job. And then our cultural presence, uh, it also has to do with some of the stuff that was just talked about in the open source platform. But uh, we have a Twitter, a Facebook, uh, enough stuff to manage, but it'd be nice to just have even more things chronicling what we're doing and helping get other people involved. Uh, and then Moonshots, so we've got this Hackiel K-12 initiative. It already exists, but what it is is I go to Metro Business Academy, which is a high school down the road, and teach a programming class a couple times a semester. And what we really want it to be is more of a presence the way that like CHE or demos or some other community service group on campus has a presence in high schools where we're involved in a lot of high schools teaching programming, having individual interactions with kids, and trying to get as many younger kids involved in programming as quickly as possible. Because to be honest, uh, with the introductory stuff, they catch on just as quickly as the Yale students, and they're a lot less afraid to make mistakes. Um, and then uh, the other thing which got deleted from the slide is Hack University. That's what I was talking about a bit when I said we considered expansion. Um, we even had, we even like bought a camera and started filming ourselves talking, as Professor Bloom said, to an empty audience, which is not the most fun thing. Uh, and so it's, it's much harder to do that. And we realized that it really requires a lot of work to create custom content just to do that. Uh, so it never really came to anything, but interested to hear anyone's thoughts. Um, so uh, some learnings we've had and some enduring mysteries. Uh, so there are some easy lessons. Uh, a lot of these are specific to teaching programming and especially to teaching web development. Uh, one of the first lessons we had is we have to focus on the products. And what I mean by that is we can't say, oh, hey, guys, like, let's learn about for loops. This is going to be so exciting. We have to say, no, let's learn about how to make this. Or have you seen your news feed on Facebook? Let's figure out how that works. Putting things in a real context that people can relate to uh, makes it much easier to get kids excited about what we're doing. Um, maybe to the contempt of some of my professors and teachers in high school, I've always treated the teacher-student relationship as one where the student is always right. You know, I'm paying for an education, you're getting paid to give me one, and so if you're not doing it in the way that's working for me, that's not my fault. And so we try to make, on the other side of the, on the, other side of the window as teachers, we try to hold ourselves to the same standards and to say, if the student isn't extremely intrinsically interested, if the student doesn't love class every day, that's our fault, and we need to figure out how we can make that change. Um, so part of that is exuding passion, which is the other thing. This does not come naturally to me. Um, I'm normally very quiet, uh, but one thing that I try to do is show how excited I am about some of these nerdy technologies and hope that a little bit of that rubs off on the students. Uh, there, we've had some, some non-obvious, subtler lessons. One thing that wouldn't have occurred to anyone on day one is that we should have class when people aren't working. Our most attended class in the history of Hack Yale is our Friday afternoon section. Um, it's very easy for students to say, oh, it's a Tuesday night, I have this, this, and that, I'm going to skip Hack Yale. But it's less easy for students who are very ambitious uh, naturally to say, oh, it's a Friday afternoon, I'm not doing anything, why shouldn't I be at Hack Yale? Uh, this one might go uh, over people's heads or under people's feet. Um, swag. So you can define this as confidence if you haven't term heard the word before. But this is specific to computer science. A lot of people learn one thing, and then they, they, for they don't understand the next thing. And they're like, oh, shoot, I'm not smart. I can't learn this. The people who know this are just smarter than me. And that's not true. Uh, if other people have learned to do it, then you can too. It's about ramming your head against the wall until there are cracks, and then continuing to ram your head against the wall until it breaks down and then hoping you don't have a concussion on the other side. Um, and to do that, you really need perseverance, drive, and confidence the whole way. You need to feel like people have done this, so I can too. And then uh, when it comes to instruction, we prepare a ton of slides. We have these nice looking slides with a clear outline of what seminar is going to go like. And then you know, we're like, OK, so last time we studied this, does everyone remember what this is? And everyone's like, no, I forgot. And so we have to improvise on a day-to-day -day basis and sort of avoid being a prepackaged set of lectures, as we put it earlier. 
we haven't really figured out how to ensure long-term commitment. I said that the Friday afternoon class is our best attended lecture or seminar to date, uh, but it's still not that great. I think everyone who's dealt with huge online courses, um, I don't know if you guys read that Fast Company article. I don't know if you agreed with the journalistic integrity of it, but if you did get a chance to read it, uh, one thing that stood out is that the completion rates for a lot of these classes just aren't that high. And with Hack Yale, when we have full-time students who are devoting their free time to this, that's obviously a huge problem for us too, and something that we're working really hard to solve um, and holding ourselves to the standard that it's our fault. Um, and then we need to bite off the right amount for our class. Uh, the first time that we taught it, we tried to do the front-end technologies and then also a back-end in Node.js, and it was just a little bit too much. So we've scaled back to front-end stuff, but we're still figuring out exactly what the right balance is, especially when we have a class of some people who have programmed before, some people who have no experience, and some people who are entering uh, their fourth year as a computer science major. And we're still working on swag. Um, that, one's, that one's a never-ending battle. Uh, cool. So I prepared some homework for you guys today. Uh, <laughs> if you want to brag about how you've done it, you can send me an email and, with a screenshot of the completed project. Uh, that is not necessary. So homework number one is to complete project one at dash.generalassembly. Uh, the URL is a little difficult for people who are not as literate with the internet, but uh, General Assembly is a startup in New York. It was started by some Yale graduates, uh, Matthew Brimer and Brad Hargreaves, and uh, they have a new product called Dash, which teaches introductory web development from a very product-focused side. If you guys have used Code Academy before, it's a fantastic platform, but it is more of a programming teacher than a product-building teacher, and I really like how this takes an approach of building products uh, from day one. And also go ahead and play around with a demo at hackyale-intro.herokuapp.com. It's a little demo that I put together for you guys so that you can understand a little bit more about what I mean when I say HTML versus CSS versus JavaScript. Uh, it, it takes you through what the three technologies mean and then gives you a little demo to play around with at the end. Thank you guys so much for listening to me air my thoughts. And if you have any more questions, you can email me at zach at hackyale.com. Or if you didn't get anything that I've said, I'm happy to define it for you. Mm -hmm. Thanks.